I went to the Midwest Rope Art Festival in Indiana and I got some great interviews. The Rope Art Project is a, is a project that helps people not just buy, but build 3D printers at home so they can make cool new stuff. I saw 3D printers online in a blog post about four years ago. And after doing a lot of digging online, a lot of searching and running through forms, I ran across the RepRap project. From there, I self-sourced building a, a Prusa Mendel version i2. Uh, I assembled that completely on my own, bought the parts from McMaster Car, printed parts from a random guy in Germany, had all the stuff shipped in, it was completely... The prop is open hardware, which means that, um, which means that nobody owns it. Anybody can go down and build this. You just need the parts and the directions. Anybody can build this. This is a little cone that right onto the print gun. There were a couple of boat events going on in the, um, at the festival, and I asked Ryan Tono to explain a little more to me about them. Uh, today we're starting our build event, and basically what that is is a it's a group of people who get together and with an instructor are guided through putting together 3D printers. Typically it's over a weekend and what they'll do is spend the time with the instructor assembling the printer as a group. So at the end of the weekend or two day period, whatever it is typically, they will end up with a functional, working, calibrated 3D printer. Joseph Pusha is the um, guy who invented the model of 3D printer we're building at our school. So I asked him how he got started. I just found RepRap on the internet and I just kept improving it. I and just happened. Just like to play with it and I taught myself everything by just playing with it. And um, what do you think 3D printers should look like in 10 years? I have no idea. If you look how they look three years ago, how they look now, it's completely different. I would make fool of myself and <laughs> try to guess them. Can you guess? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm asking you. <laughs> Maybe better resolution, it will be more friendly for uh, newbies. Less dangerous. Yeah, not dangerous when you don't touch the hot parts. Yeah, well, the hot end actually hits up really hot. My fingers doesn't feel anything. <laughs> Johnny Russell runs a, um, runs a company that sells 3D printer parts and filament. He, he also designed one of, the, one of a popular set of, elect, probably the most popular set of electronics. Um, so I asked him what was his favorite part about 3D printing. That's a good question. The coolest thing about 3D printing is that you can make anything that you're willing to design. Anything. And what do you think 3D printing Yeah. They'll look a lot different than they do now. They'll be more enclosed and look a lot smoother and do a lot cooler stuff. Oh, yeah. One of the newest designs out there is called the Delta Pot. It has a whole different way of moving the hot end around. I asked Sunny Monocule to um to explain to me a little more about how it works. My name is Sonny. Um, this is a Rostock printer. So this is a little different than the normal uh, machines that we are familiar with. So normally we use uh, what we would call Cartesian machines where it deals with you know, more of a X, Y, and Z movement isolated. But this one actually is a little bit different because the, the arms move independently and you can see that it actually, this is called the Delta Bot. Um, the type of machine is a Delta Bot. The, the specific uh, uh, implementation is more of a row stock. So this piece right here that's moving around is called the effector, okay? And these are the arms that go up to the carriages. And so you can see that as opposed to having anything that, that any bars that go across, what you actually have is these move up and down on these rails and that causes the, the it's push from one end to the other. So 
it's a little bit different than what we're used to. Um, it's really good at printing tall parts, and it's really good at moving very fast from one end to the other. Um, I like to think that uh, each of the machines have kind of their own specialty, and um, and this one is very much, uh, I think, sculptures and, and things like um, this rocket are, are really ideal for this type of machine. And um, why is there that tube there for the filament engine? Sure. So um, on these type machines, it's very important that the um, that the carriage right here is light. You don't want it to be very heavy because of the arms and the movement. And so it uses what's called a Bowden extruder. So whereas you're probably familiar with normal ones where you have an extruder moving on the carriage, this one actually has the extruder body over here. And you can actually see the hob in there pushing it. And it pushes it through this PTFE tube down straight into the hob. So it's just, uh, it's very different. This one, uh, this Tantalus also does the same thing. You can see the tube on top. Um, it's just a way of make, it's a way of moving the motor away from the heated portion so that the head can move very fast. Thank you.